Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Kelly Howard. She's an over 60 adventure chick who trains clients to be prepared for their own adventures or ones with her. Now, Kelly wouldn't have even called herself an outdoors person till she bought an online outdoor adventure company at 40 years old. Now, she had so much fun learning how to do all of the outdoor activities her business offered that she knew she had to teach others what she was doing and what it took to get started. So if you found yourself thinking or saying, if I was younger, I would do fill in the blank and perhaps you're secretly wanting to try something outdoors. Or maybe it's been years since you went on an outdoor adventure and you wanna get back in, but you're like, man, I don't wanna be the slow one. I don't wanna have people waiting for me. Well, guess what? This podcast is for you. So before I introduce you to Kelly Howard, let me ask you this. What have you always wanted to do? What kind of outdoor adventure have you always wanted to try? Now, ponder that during this podcast. Let's introduce you to Kelly Howard. Hey, health junkies. I have Kelly Howard on today, and we're going to be talking about fitness. We're going to be talking about no excuses, and we're going to be talking about having fitness be something that's actually fun for us. So, Kelly, welcome to Health Fix Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for everybody listening, and thank you for having me here. Hey, it's my pleasure. When I saw your website and what you're up to, I'm like, she's doing what I've always dreamed of doing at some point in my practice. And so I'm like, this is great. Great insight into what is going on with helping folks really find their fitness and find fitness fun. Yeah. It's important. It is. It is because, you know, I'll admit, and and maybe this happens to a lot of folks, I'll admit that like going to the gym For me, it used to be really cool back in the day. Like all my friends were there. That's where I'd meet people. But as I get older, I'm like, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to drive there. It's not as much fun as it used to be. (laughs) So it's kind of like reinventing myself when, you know, when it comes to fitness. I think a lot of people are in that boat too. So give us, give us your backstory. How have you always been into fitness? Did you come to it later in life? What's, what's the scoop? So yeah. Um, as far as like weight, mm-hmm. I, I was probably doing weights when I was 19. And so maybe the only girl in the, <laughs> that wasn't in the, you know, the girl section. I don't know if you remember this, like Jim Juice had the little pink room for the women mm-hmm. and they'd have like the wiggle things. It was just like really strange. So I did enjoy going to the gym. Uh, I didn't, you know, I'm self-taught. Mm-hmm. I was always self-taught and, but I wasn't like outdoorsy. I sailed. I was a sailor and I skated. I was a long distance skater. And that was kind of like, you know what I did. Uh, Later, probably at about 40, I bought an outdoor company and realized that I needed to get, I needed to figure out how to like do all these things that they wanted to do (laughs) because it wasn't really my thing. And I just fell in love. I just fell in love with all the fun stuff that we can do. And it, it's all levels of fitness. Like that's what I love about outdoor play is that you don't have to be like, you know, some goddess going to the gym daily and, you know, throwing down a hundred pounds or something. You can be anyone and still enjoy getting outside and having a good time. Oh, absolutely. Now this is cool. So you, you purchased an outdoor business with like a brick and mortar or online no, or it was, it was an online company. So at the time I had two businesses that were both online and there was this other company in my city that I was always helping. Like I just, I, every time I turn around, I'd be, you need to go, you need to go join this company because this is the cool stuff. Like this is the fun stuff I was doing. Like at the time I was in the business of online dating. Like that's where I started. And so I'd be like, yeah, 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 you'll meet people, but you'll have a lot more fun over there. And I just kept promoting their company and he appreciated it, but he could never quite get it off ground. And then he met his wife through my company. So it's like this insidious little thing. So we're having coffee one day because he had called me. He said, I want to talk to you. So because he knows how passionate I am about his company, this online outdoor company. And we meet and he says, you know, I'm going to get married met my wife through your company. 
I'm like, cool, that's awesome. And I'm shutting this other one down. I just wanted to let you know face to face because I know you think it's so cool. And without even thinking, I just went, oh, I'll buy it. Don't shut it down. I'll buy it. Like, Don't even ask a price. Don't even know what's involved. Just know that you can't let this thing get away because it was like getting people to go outside and go hiking and biking and kayaking. And, and it was, you know, it was a membership club. So you would have an online calendar yeah. and then you'd go do the things. So he said, okay. <laughs> and I was like, cool. Now what am I going to do? And I just had to figure it out. So that's how I really got into like the outdoor space. That's neat. That's a neat way to do it. Cause you know, you always think like, you know, someone has their passion with, you know, let's, let's go with rock climbing, right? right? Someone's got their passion there and they've got all the ropes, they got all the things and they're like, I, I'm just going to get, get a gear shop going. And then it expands right from there. And this is, this is the totally different way <laughs> of getting into <laughs> yeah, it was like, I mean, I have so many stories of like, you know, like being totally, a, I don't know what you want to call it. Like not the smartest crayon in the box. I one time, okay, I have to tell you, tell you the story just because it's so silly. For anybody listening who's a cyclist and is a real cyclist, you know that you want to be seen when you're on the road. Mm -hmm. like bright colors and you know, bright helmet. Well, I wasn't even that much of a I mean, I wasn't a cyclist. I bought a bike because I knew I had to buy a bike. So then I get asked to be part of this, this uh like educational video on cycling. And I'm like, I'm so excited. Like I'm super excited. And that day when I wake up, it's cold. So I put on my black, long black pants. I put on my long black jacket. I've got this gray helmet. They literally used me as the example of what not to do on a bike. <laughs> oh no. It took me a while. Oh, no. I figured it all out. <laughs> oh man. Well, and you know, I think this is good to hear because I think sometimes when we 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 think of folks who are in fitness or we think of folks who are cyclists or or into certain sports that they had it all figured out like day right. one. Like, you know, we we had didn't have that newbie beginning. And so I'm noticing like that that seems to be a theme in, in the different folks I'm interviewing is that yeah, there's like we didn't have it all figured out when we tried, we just jumped in. Yeah. If there's like one thing I could tell people. Don't think that you have to be good at it or know how to do it or, you know, not hold people back, all of those things. What you really need is just like to be excited and find someone who's going to give you a little bit of a hand. And that's it because it's so important. And, and it, it's something I see a lot is that people don't want to go outside and play. I'll put it that way because they're, you know, the intimidation factor. And yes, being in shape is helpful. You know, and yes, knowing what to do is helpful, but there's always a place everybody starts. Everybody. Yes. Yes. We all have to start somewhere. And that was something that, you know, caught my eye in looking at your website prior to the podcast. I had noticed that you had something like no one, you're not going to be left behind on any of the adventures or anything. And that I think for a lot of people, it is a real deal thought. And especially as you get older, I mean, I even have been there where, you know, I'm getting into my mid forties and I'm not as fast as I used to be hiking up hills and, and hiking mountains for that matter. And I'm like, Oh, I don't want to leave my, you know, I don't want people waiting yeah. for me. Right. I don't want to exactly. I don't want them waiting for me. We mm -hmm. all have it. Every one of us. I, I actually, one day, this is a cycling event in my brain again, but I'm <laughs> with a group. They're, they're pretty good. Like I'm, I'm thinking I'm okay, but they're pretty good. And they're always faster than me. So they would get to a rest stop and they would wait for me. They would get to a rest stop. They would wait for me. And I am like humiliated, just like I'm back there doing everything I can to keep up. And finally, my brain engages and it's like, count how long they're waiting for you because I can see them get to the rest stop. Right. And so I start counting like 15 seconds, 20 seconds in front of me. It doesn't matter. Right. It just doesn't matter. But in our heads, we're like, oh, no, we're holding people back. It's baloney. Yeah. It's funny how our brains can really tell us a different story of of what's happening compared to to the reality. Right. Sure. Oh man, I know I've been there for sure, especially with bike mountain biking with my husband, who oh, I would gosh. swear. <laughs> like he's been <laughs> waiting for me half hour and it was the same thing. <laughs> 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Yeah. And they needed to catch their breath. <laughs> right. Right. And then I get there and he's like, okay, cool. You know, and I'm like, Oh, you had to wait for me. I mean, so many fights I've seen. 
so oh, many fights yes. over yes. that. And even like, well, we won't even get into like the, the chairlift arguments I've heard when I lived in Colorado. <laughs> oh, oh, I think you, you want to you want to know what's going to happen to the relationship. Go skiing together. I can oh. Oh, goodness. So, of course, you know, you've you've now I mean, do, do you still have the the online fitness business? Has it morphed into? No, I okay. actually sold it. So I sold it maybe four or five years ago because I really wanted to focus on what I do now, like 100 yeah. percent, because what I found myself doing was spending more time in that online business, helping women mostly get in shape so that they can go do the things they want to do. And, and I realized, you know what, this is, this is just my next, this is my next gig in life. So that company is actually still doing amazing. Nice. I'm still you know, leading events for them occasionally. And now I'm just onto my, a new thing. Huh. Is this how the events tie in that you have on your website? The fittest freedom website. Is that how things a tie little in? bit, okay. uh, what happened, I guess the way the event started was it was probably during COVID maybe like maybe the first year of COVID we did a, what I do called sugar freedom. It's like this 30 day challenge where we go without sugar. And it was really funny because everybody was, it was tough. It was tough for the crew. Like, and we were leaning on each other and everybody is like in the accountability group and they're talking each other off the fence. And like, I want to eat all the cookies. Don't do it. Don't do it. Right. So the, their this camaraderie happens where everybody's just like really feeling close to each other. We're on a call and it didn't run in around in my head that I'd like to take a group to the Smokies. And so we're on this call and everybody's like cheering each other on. We did this. And I went, Hey, you want to celebrate and do a hiking trip in the Smokies? And everybody's like, yeah, I want to go. I want to go. And then all of a sudden they're like, deer in the headlights. Wait a second. What's it going to be like? <laughs> I'm going to be like, it's going to be fun. Trust me. It'll be fun. And that was the first one I did. And after that, I just, I have a passion for, you know, taking people and showing them places I've been. So now we do it a few times a year. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I noticed like Alaska's coming up. You've got Portugal coming up. Are you guys surfing in Portugal? It Portugal's not surfing. Okay. Um, but I have done surfing in Costa Rica before, and that was a fun one. And so, yes. Yeah. Now, Okay, here's an interesting question. Have you ever been surfing before you took a group down to Costa Rica? To uh, no, that first time I hadn't. I, it was in my head, right? Like I had this picture of me getting on the board, hanging tin, you know, like being one of those people. Um, I, I was I was like what they call star fishing. You know, when you fall off, you spread your arms out so you don't kill yourself. Yeah, 24-7. But it was so much fun. Now I still have this image in my head of me being that kind of surfer. Surfing is the worst thing I am. Like if you said, what's your worst sport? Surfing. I spend most of my time, you know, splatting in the water. But that first time I had never been surfing. So we all learned at the same time and everybody on that trip got up on their board by the end. Nice. It was, I guess there were eight of us that were there, eight women, and we all got up on our boards and we thought we were just like, it, look out Hawaii. <laughs> here you guys come oh my goodness you know i think you you're bringing up really good points here like you had never been on a surfboard and you're taking some folks down there to, to come hang out with you and you you're training folks to to do sports right like different you know activities as as well so give us a scoop a little bit about like how your training looks and and what you guys are up to in your training programs sure so the training is two things one of them is just like the fitness training and that's separate, but I'll just talk about the adventure training first. So the adventure training, when somebody comes on a retreat with me, th this came from um, realizing that people wanted that training, right? So I created this plan called Adventure Fit. And with it, it's about three months long. People can stretch it in five or six months, doesn't matter. But it's very, very simple with some mobility, some um, resistance that can be done. Doesn't matter whether you're using body weights or, you know, bands or weights or doesn't matter how you do it, but some resistance because people need certain strengths. They don't think they know they need. And then, um, like a hiking program, you know, start off here, add this to your pack. You'll want to be able to, you know, do two my or two hours. If you're going on this trip or, you know, two and a half, if you're going on this trip and you need to be at this particular level and, and the, um, the caveat for all of this 
is I always set the trips up so that if somebody doesn't feel like going out and going like crazy pants, we have a second guide and we do, you know, other trails. So no one has to feel like, oh my gosh, I can't keep up with the group going up the side of the mountain. Everybody, you know, those people are like, hey, go do a fun, a fun one around the, around the volcano or whatever it is. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. What's been your most fun trip so far that you guys Ooh. have gone on? Okay. That's, that's like, that's not a fair question. <laughs> okay. Maybe like, what's your, your top three? Top three? Uh, so, okay. Fun. I'll give you a couple of highlights. Last year okay. um, on our Costa Rica trip, I had the year before everybody was like, yeah, that was pretty easy. I was like, huh. Okay. Well, let's up the ante, ladies, you know, <laughs> throw down a gauntlet. So I, I told my guide, I use a guide down there and I told him, you know, the trip I wanted and we did it. Um, the last day cumulated in climbing a volcano. We started at like 5,000. We ended up at 12, five, I think. So it was a, it was a serious hike. Uh, we went back down and we went to the, the company that owns the guide service that I was using, walked in and the owner was there and he looked at me and he literally got down on his knees and he did this bowing movement and he went, I have never seen a group do this hard a trip ever before. And like all the ladies are standing there and they're just all looking at him. And he's like, you guys are goddesses. I cannot believe you did this. And, and they were, they were laughing because they thought he was being serious. And he's like, I'm serious. I have, or they thought he was kidding actually. And he said, I've <laughs> never, I've never put a trip on this hard. My guides were going, where are we going? So that was a, that was fun. And then the Smoky Mountains, I take people there every year because that is kind of like my heart center. And I just love, love, love showing people the Smokies because it's just so amazing. And then there's like all the other fun things that we do. We did dog sledding this year and, you know, just crazy stuff, stuff you wouldn't think about doing, right? Yeah. That's what I like is when you do things that people are like, oh, wow, that would be so cool if I could. But, you know, I can't do that. So I'm like, why not? Let's go do it. Let's do it. That is what drew me to because, you know, so many people will be like, oh, I'm too old for that. Or, oh, I always wanted to do that. But guess that ship sailed. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Like people say that all the time. Last year on my Smokies trip, I had a lady who was 74, I think, something like that. So and she said to me, am I too old? I'm like, you're not too old. Like I'm 60 three now getting ready to be 64. So like, I mean, let's not talk about old. Okay. Kids. And <laughs> she was so strong. Like she was so strong and she was just, and I'm like, of course you're not too old. It's, it's really interesting to me because we have these um, ideas. I mean, if you, if I can, I'll tell you a quick, a quick story Absolutely. about an idea going back to when I was 40. So I just bought this new company. And I'm reading this magazine about this trip that these people had taken in Texas down a river called the Devil's River. And it's Whitewater River. It's not even that big, but it's a Whitewater River. And I'm reading the story and I, I just literally turned to my partner and I said, wow, if I was younger, I would learn how to whitewater kayak. And he looks at me because he's like, that's really weird for you to say. He's like, well, oh, well, right. So fast forward for eight years, eight years later. One of my people says, hey, you got to do this thing. It's really fun. So I get, I end up taking everybody, once again, had never done it to my, done it before, took a, took a group to um, an instructor, did the whitewater class, and it has become my favorite thing in the world. Like I paddle all the time. And that was, right, what? That was a long time ago. That was 20 years ago. I was thinking, ah, if I was just younger, I'd try this. So never, ever, ever stop because you don't think you're the right age. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, I I even catch myself, and, and it's not my mentality, but I'll catch myself in the back of my head. I'll be like, oh, I really wish I would have, you know, done this or this sooner. Kayaking, yeah. one of them, you know, that kind of stuff. You think to yourself, oh, you watch people go down those rivers, and you're like, wow, I should have done that when I was younger. Should have done that. Wish I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. I mean, and I'm not a great paddler, trust me. I'm, I've am i swam every river that I've paddled, I think. But at the same time, it doesn't matter because you're just doing something that you love to do. You're having fun. It's exercise. 
And, and I guess I should say this, it leads me to work out harder and become more in shape because when I have like, let's say a whitewater trip coming up, I know what is, what the, what I have to be able to do. So you know, two, three months in advance, I start training harder because I want to be strong and sh and fit and, you know, ready for that trip. So it's, it gives us something to look forward to. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of one of the places where, you know, a lot of women are like, oh, I'm too busy for fitness or, oh, I, you know, I can't fit it in or, oh, I don't know how to make it work. And you've got kind of the antidote there. You're like, well, we just get you an adventure that you want to do. <laughs> that's right. Simple as that. That's it. Are you dreaming of outdoor adventures, but looking for a little training, guidance, and an all-woman crew to go with? Kelly Howard offers adventures throughout the year, and right now she has some spots open for her Smoky Mountains Fall Colors hiking trip. That's the end of October this year. So if you're interested in going with Kelly and getting the training it takes to be able to crush those trails out in the Smoky Mountains, Kelly's got you covered. So head over to https colon forward slash forward slash fit is freedom dot com forward slash event forward slash smoky dash mountains dash fall dash colors dash hiking forward slash. Now, if you're driving, can't write that down, don't worry. Head over to drjkrausnd.com to the show notes for episode 464, and you'll be able to get that link there as well. Plus the link to Kelly's website for other adventures from Alaska to the San Juan Islands and even Costa Rica. Gosh, stuff I want to do. So you might even catch me there. All right, let's get back on with the podcast. If you've got, it's, so it's unfortunate, but a lot of times um, call it fitness or exercise or workout. It's a, it's a gotta do. Mm -hmm. um, it's not fun. It's not exciting. It's just something that we feel like we have to do and we have to fit it in. So when we turn the mindset on that and it's kind of like, there's a whole lot of to it. Like, A, if you've ever hurt anything, then when you're able to start doing it again, you know, you break an arm and then you can use your arm again. You're like, thank goodness I've got this great arm. Now I can do this stuff, right? So that's one piece of it. But the other piece of it is, is instead of thinking of it as a chore, think of it as um, something that leads to something better. It's, 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 to me, it's the gateway to all the fun. I, I like that thought. I like that thought and that concept because, you know, for me, it's it's one of those things people always say to me, well, you've always been doing fitness. You've always been doing sports. You don't, you like, you know, doing this. I'm like, yeah, but like lifting weights. Sure. I like it. I enjoy it, but I love going for a bike ride, right? Or I love, right. being, you know, paddle boarding. So it's like finding that thing, finding that thing. Now, do you find that a lot of women who come to you, do you find that they tend to be, wanting to to find something or or that they're searching for something or do they come with like I want to do this what does it seem like the the kind of folks mm, that come your way maybe may I would say maybe 10 percent come to me mm -hmm. saying I want to do this mm -hmm. and you know show me how to get ready for it everybody else comes in there like and nobody wants to tell the dream right? Nobody wants to say the dream out loud because it's, it seems like it's like me with, you know, if I was younger, I could mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. And when I ask enough times the right way, I get the answer. Well, I've always thought it would be really cool too. And when you know that, then you know, you've got that dream and, and then you just play on it because so much of it is that we, well, I mean, people, Put off their dreams, especially, and I'm, and I know you don't have just a women's um, audience, but I will say a lot of women put their dreams off quite a bit because they want to take care of everyone else. Hmm. I had a client that came to me, and she just said, she said, I just want to lose weight. I'm like, okay, that's not too much fun, but okay, you know, we can do that. And so we start talking, and it turns out that every year she's got three sons and a husband. Every year she does all the dehydration for their food, for their backpacking trip to, to have a Sioux Falls every year. She takes them there. She drops them off. She picks them up at the end. And I'm like, how do you feel about that? She's like, well, 
you know, if, if, you know, it would be really fun if I could go, but I can't go because, you know, I couldn't keep up and I don't know how to do that. And, you know, so and so forth. I'm like, I'm sorry, you're going next year. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And she did. She oh. did. Wow. Yes. <laughs> wow. And and has she gone since? Is she Did she love it? What's the story? Um, you know, she's done other things. She ah. said that she's done other things with female friends. She said, yep, that was good. Um, but I want to do something a little different than, you know, having the boys and my husband along. You know, I think there's something about that. I think there's something about that, having other women, because there's just like, you know, camaraderie, but there's also, I think, you know, guys are, can be stronger, right? They can be faster. They've got their guy things. Let's put it that way. It, it is different. It is different. It is nice to be surrounded by community. And I know that you have quite a community. Yes. I, I think community is so important because, Women have, doesn't matter what, like, I'm, I'm kind of that, I'm a little bit of a, I don't know if alpha is the right word, but, you know, kind of a little pushy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know how much I appreciate having women in my quarter cheering me on when I want to finish something mm -hmm. and how important it is to cheer other women on. And I see that in the community too, because we get the whole mix. You know, we get other women that are a little bit like me and we get people who are like, oh, I can't do that. And everybody cheers each other on. They help each other along. And in the end, I mean, I can still remember that first trip. We're all standing on the top of this mountain, high-fiving each other. And we're sweaty. We're disgustingly dirty. And I had one lady say, I've never been this dirty in my life. Welcome to the world. Um, and it was just so much fun. And we didn't care. We just had a good time. And, and there's that camaraderie is... I think slightly hard to come by if, and it's a little different when you're in a mixed gender group. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there, there is, there, there definitely mm -hmm. is when we're by ourselves as ladies, we can definitely, I don't know. I, there's just some cohesiveness. I think that happens. Some, some bonds yeah. that just, I think so too. You don't find anywhere else. And that's why I love seeing, you know, groups like yours, groups like women who explore and, you know, things of that nature, because it just makes me think, okay, you know, now we can, we can bond and over, over fitness, right? Exactly. Now, do you get a lot of women who are single or who have either lost partners or, you know, just never been married, things of that nature in, in your groups too? Cause I'm, I'm kind of leaning back towards the dating <laughs> business that you had back in the day. <laughs> but, so, okay. Yeah. That's funny, right? The dating business. I, I don't, I couldn't even tell you how I got into that. Quite frankly, I don't even remember. I think I, oh, yes, I do. I bought a magazine that had dating in it. And then I was like, and this goes back to a very long time ago. So we had like, I was like, well, we should do this online, right? Before even match started. So oh my gosh, that, yes. But we also have, I would say that we're probably, probably 80% of the people who join, the women who join are single. And then 20% of them are married and they either have husbands who just don't want to go do things right, or can't do things. I mean, you've got both sides of it. Like the guys that I can think of one client right off the top of my head, like she tried to get him to eat well for his entire life. And now he's got some serious health issues and he can't go play. And she's like, well, I love him and I'm going to go play with you guys. <laughs> I mean, it, there's it's okay yeah that's huge because i have a lot of patients too they're like well you know i really wish i could get my husband to do this you know with me and it's like but you can do it by yourself yeah yeah and it's it is there are a lot of things that we can do by ourselves it's just learning that it's okay um mm -hmm. one of them like maybe let's just say hiking mm -hmm. a lot of times the first question I'll get is, well, is that safe going alone? Um, in my world, now I live in Houston, Texas, so you know, big city, right? I'm thinking it's a whole lot more unsafe on the roads than it is in the trails. But I would never suggest that somebody go do something that they're not comfortable with. Sure. But I've also found that if I, if I give them a little bit of knowledge, like how to, how to read a trail, right? You know? what you need to take with you. Um, 
how long to be gone. You know, just like basic stuff. All of a sudden, it's not as big a deal. And then one day, you know, somebody goes out on a trail. This One of my best friends, this is how I met her. I'm out on a trail hiking around in the woods. I meet this other girl out there hiking around in the woods. We start talking. We start walking together. Next thing you know, that was 20 years ago. We're still great friends. So, you know, you meet people too. And... Yeah. I mean, I think that's, you know, looking into the future and and talking with a lot of my patients and, you know, I am lucky. My husband is very active. He likes to do things like that. But I look at it, too, though, is that we need our separate crew, right? Like we were saying before, men, you know, they get their thing and then ladies, we get our crew. And I've always looked at different athletic groups, you know, whether it's a running club, whether it's a hiking club or whatnot to to find my friends and and find folks that will help lift me up and keep me going in terms of the fitness side of things. Have you found that in your journey with, with inspiring folks to, to keep up on their fitness and be consistent since, since you are the master of consistency, I I hear, um, have you found that it's, it's more about the tribe, the crew and, and finding friends, or is it more about mindset and, and working on that side of things that keeps folks consistent? Oh, that's a really good question. So I think that the finding the tribe helps the mindset. Like in the end, even though we do a ton of accountability, like that's one of the things that I do with people. In the end, I'm always telling people, you really have to be 100% accountable to yourself. Like that's where you're heading. You just, that's where we're all heading. And the community helps that. But the community is building the mindset. Yeah. 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 And and tell us a little bit more, because now, now you've got different offerings in terms of ways folks can work with you. You've got your book, too. You've got a podcast, all, all the things. I would love to hear a little bit about what it, what's a journey like for someone that comes in and does work with you with the accountability, with the, the community, with the whole group. How How does it play out so folks can kind of get a sense of what it's like? Oh, yeah. No, that's a good question. I would say it's 50-50. About 50% of the people find my book, read it, go to the book bonuses, (laughs) you know, go through the whole process, find the book bonuses, do the book bonuses. Then they're like, well, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should get on a call with Kelly and see, you know, how to create a plan. Because that's, that's one of the pieces that I love the most is that all of us are different. We're all different and we need different plans. Like maybe someone needs to deal with the with the injuries or the pain and the, you know, the inflammation before they start doing the weightlifting or whatever it is. So, you know, that's one path. Another path is that like a person that just joined the group today, she found out about one of the um, trips that we're leading. I'm not even sure how she found out about it. Not even sure how she got on the trip, right? Like this is like every so often somebody just shows up in my inbox. I'm like, I wonder who that is. Well, I should reach out to her and make sure that, you know, she's prepared for this trip. So, and then, so she just joined the group. And then sometimes people are like, okay, I've been listening to you. And what I want is I want handholding. I'm like, cool. So I do like this six month program where it's one-on-one and then they stay. So they, they start with the handholding and then they stay for the community. That's really what happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I envision things, you know, going in terms of, you know, the perfect situation. Folks work with you, then they become part of the community. And now you've got folks who are becoming friends, hiking together, finding each other yeah. in, in close communities and things of that nature. What's, you know, I think a lot of folks love hearing stories about success stories or or like what's one of your favorite stories about one of your clients or even someone who's currently still in the oh, community? Yeah. yeah, actually, I have a favorite story. So um, I've got a lot of them, but I'll tell you this one. <laughs> so this person came to work with me and she said, I mean, she said, I don't need to lose weight. Uh, I look great in my clothes, but I've lost all my muscle. I don't wear skirts anymore because, you know, my legs look like chickens and I'm not, and, and I probably can't work with you for very long because I think I'm going to have to have shoulder surgery because this shoulder hurts all the time. Hmm. So I'm like, Okay, well, let's just see what we can do. And then, you know, if you need to have surgery, you'll be better prepared for it. And then we'll start again. 
fine. So we worked together and she had always done, she was, she was Southern. She, she was my Southern belle. Okay. <laughs> so she had walked for fitness, but she didn't like to sweat. Um, so she would do some walking and that was about it. I'm like, okay, cool. All these things are cool, but not gonna, not gonna get you where you want to go. So she's, she trusted me. I think is what happened is she trusted me and we I put together a plan that, you know, together that she would do, um, did a little hand holding, did all the things, but what happened along the way. So it was probably, I'm going to make this up, but she probably joined in January. So she decides to come with me to the Smokies in June. And I said to her, I said, what would your goal be in life? Like, if you could have the most perfect outcome this year, what would it be? She's like, oh, I know what it'd be. She said, I would go with you on that trip. And I would know that I could do everything you wanted to do. And I could get on the plane. I would get on the plane and I'd be wearing my hiking boots. And I'd be wearing my hiking boots with a short skirt. And I would be carrying my backpack on my back. And I would put that backpack up above in the luggage compartment by myself and everybody would know that I didn't need any help that I was that kind of woman I'm like we got this we got this so we go through everything do all the stuff get to the airport she shows up in her hiking boots in her short skirt and she looks good she looks super good and she gets on the airplane she gives me this little smile and she walks down the aisle kind of a little sachet Clicks the thing, throws her luggage up above, sits down. And she's like, yep, that's the woman I am. And I'm like, it couldn't get any better than that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Ah, uh, I like that story a lot because it, it just tells you like, you know, how someone can visualize what they want, crush it. And then now we've got strength on top of it. Now, has she done more programs with you or she oh, did yeah. that and she was on her own? <laughs> Well, I mean, a lot of times, I mean, it's not that they have to continue, but everybody stays for the for the community and the trips and stuff like that. But she's doing really well. She's doing really well. Nice. Oh, that's yeah. good to hear. That's good to hear. So, you know, I think we've, we've mentioned community over and over again, and I think a lot of folks are like, okay, well, what does that entail? Is this a Facebook group? Is it, you know, what, what is it? So tell us oh. a little bit about your community, how, how often folks interact, how often you interact, what, what's it like for someone to, if they were to jump into your experience, could you give them an, a, an experience of what it's like to be part of the community? That's, that's a good question because we're all over the world, the community, right? mostly in the uh, United States and Canada, but we have people from everywhere else. So we meet online. We meet virtually. The good old Zoom. We do. I do um, group programs or group coaching twice a month on Zoom. And then we usually have a what I call a Q&A where I'm just there and everybody comes in and does what, you know, asks questions, catches up with each other, does breakout sessions, whatever they'd like. In addition to that, we do uh, accountability through WhatsApp. Okay. So we've got one WhatsApp that's just kind of like the the free for all. Like you never know what somebody's going to put in there. Um, someone put a picture in there this morning of <laughs> I took it well of a very 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 elderly lady rafting down a river with a broken arm, and they're like this is Kelly at 90. I'm like, yeah, you guys rock. Go on. Oh my God. <laughs> but then outside of that, we also do our accountability on WhatsApp. And then we do things where we get together. I mean, we get together for the retreats, but we also have like the first of this year, we've got something coming up called the resolution retreat, where it's going to be a much bigger group. People will be coming in from all over. So you know people because you've been kind of interacting with them virtually. And then all of a sudden, boom. And the other thing I see is people, I have a group, I have two, three people, three people who just left this morning. They met at, at Houston airport and they're going and doing their own trip this week. So that happens a lot. Like they'll catch up on the group. They'll be like, Hey, anybody want to go hike with me? X, Y, Z. And they're like, sure, I'm going. And so they go. And it's hard to find. It, it, it is hard to find. Like, I mean, that is why I was so passionate about that company I was talking about early on 
is it was the only group I had ever seen where people could get together and do outdoor activities and it was like really sustainable. It's hard to find that. So when you find that group of women, in my case, and we just, they just go play. That's so, it's so cool. And it's really kind of what, in my mind, I had envisioned for, you know, having having something like that myself. Super. But I'm really like, forget it. You got it covered. I'm just going to put more people over <laughs> over your way. Oh, you no, got no, no, no. You got to do it too, because, you know, everybody brings something different. Sure. Right? Like I've got, you know, kind of my, I don't know what I, what vibe I've got going, like, you know, watch me do something stupid vibe. And you can, you'd be like, Hey, you know what? We're going to get healthy and go do pl these fun things. And, you know, it's just, I think it's so important for all of us to have that connection, especially like the last few years, it's been a disconnected world and we don't have, you know, that connection, especially if somebody decided to quit working these last few years or whatever else, all of a sudden they're afloat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have so many patients that are looking for their tribe, right? They're, they're yeah. looking, they want to be fit. They want to find folks who are interested in fitness, who are interested in health and, and, you know, searching high and low for folks in their local communities and, and not finding it. But I'm wondering if a bigger community might find, help them to find folks in the little communities. Oh too. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. In fact, Chicago, for some random reason, I have four clients in the Chicago area. And and I don't know why, but I also have um, my, my long-term virtual assistant is there too. And she's quitting me to start a cat cafe, which I think is the coolest thing ever, right? So I'm flying up there and all of my, all of my clients in Chicago are there and we're going to all go to the cat cafe together. And, you know, I mean, why not? Right. Creating connection, you know, this is something that I'm, I love connecting with people. Obviously, it's part of the podcast is, is my favorite part to get to know people, but, but making connections with other folks, so huge. So, of course, since I have a podcast and you have a podcast, we got to talk about your podcast for a little bit here. Now, <laughs> what, what kind of, is it, is it connected back into the community? How does it fit into your whole, give us a scoop how it fits into the whole oh, sure. scheme sure. of things? Um, About once a year. I'll do a piece, uh, in fact, I'm right this minute it's airing, where I just talk about different people in the community and where they started and where they are now. Like, you know, what difference does three months take make? What difference is six months, a year, three years, whatever. Other than that, it is, I do tend to do a lot of what I would call health and wellness. So whether it's um, talking about my take on supplements, not someone else's, because I am not like you are a naturopath. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I have no letters behind my name. So, you know, I'll give people my take on it. Uh, I give, I give suggestions on how to get better sleep. I give suggestions on how to create your own workout, like, you know, the general fitness stuff. And yeah. then I also give suggestions on how to go out and have some good, fun adventures. So, oh, the adventures are, are what I'm gravitating towards. And I think for sure, you know, for a lot of folks hearing those stories and, and just really knowing like what, what might be close to them, that's like a gem that they, yeah. they don't know about. And yeah. like you mentioned Houston. And of course, I think the same as you, big city. What's the gem hidden in Houston? Give us a scoop. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, Houston. So Houston is a very, very flat city with um, a beach down the road that has rough, poor surf. So, so what's good in Houston is that you can get into the very middle of the city and there's a big park, big park, almost as big as Central Park. It's um, 5,000 acres and you can go play there. And people train. Like if somebody's in Houston uh, along with me, we train there for doing Glacier National Park. I mean, there's always a way to train, right? We we use parking garages for training in Houston because, right? I mean, we've got them. So, and then up from that, Houston's also known as the Bayou City. Mm -hmm. So the bayous, if you, if you don't know what a bayou is, it's a body of water that's not moving, but it's like a stream. So I've got one behind my house. They're all over. They're everywhere. And we'll go out on the bayous and, and do a little paddling. Um, 
We don't do stand up paddle boarding on the bayous because we have gators in the bayous. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I'm like, uh-huh. nope, no stand up paddling in the bayous. But we'll, I will go down to um, the beach and paddle board, or else we have a few lakes where um, the gators haven't decided to join us. So I'll paddle there too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You have to think about these things, you know, and then that's probably one of like the barriers someone might come up with in terms Absolutely. of like, oh, I have no idea now about going if there's gators. But now you're mentioning something that I didn't really think about is like city fit. Mm-hmm. And and this was when I lived in Seattle, we would we would do the stairs of the the different like right. hotels and the different places we could get into and go up and down stairs. So it yeah. sounds like when you're working with someone and they're like, Oh, I live in X, Y, or Z place. You come up with creative ways to to you get have them, to, right? You just have to, and and because otherwise, like if somebody said, "Oh, I'm going to I'm going to hike in Houston to train for Glacier," um, they'd be kind of off. I mean, ninety nine point nine percent of our trails are flat, but if you find that one piece that you lo- you know how to use this, you know, one little section to to do the up and down city fit. I love city fit because. You're right. And then there's, you know, people that go, you wanted me to go where? And I'll be like, you know, the up, uh, up and down side of bridges. They're like, no, I'm not walking up and down the side of bridges. Like, we are. It's a great place to train. <laughs> you just have to figure it out. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's creativity, right? And I think that mm-hmm. for a lot of people, once they realize like how fun it kind of is to, you know, you always see those stairs like on bridges or you'll see I- like the stairwells on a, in a, like parking garage and like nobody's ever in them. And you're like, this could be kind of fun. So creativity, creativity. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Such fun stuff. I ah, love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. And I'm really excited for folks to hear all about your offerings and things of that nature. So let's, let's tell folks about, well, I didn't even tell about the book. We have to talk about your book. The Fit is Freedom book. Well, that's the podcast, but the book. Let's talk about book and let's talk about your website and all the different ways folks can interact with you. Okay. So just to find me, easiest way to find me is just go to the website, fitisfreedom.com. Um, I'm not one of those cool kids who has, you know, the exact same handle on all the social. So I just send people to the, you know, website. Uh, the book is called Fit Active and Ageless for Life. You would like to uh, give your listeners a yeah. copy. They are more than welcome to pick pick up an electronic copy for free, like as a thank you to everybody listening and this thank you for you, to you. Uh, it is available on Amazon. It was an Amazon bestseller, nice. so it's yeah, it's been fun. It was it was one of those things that I went last. I think it was last year that I wrote it. I said, you know what, got to just do this, and I did just just start outlining the next one because I was like, okay, it's time to do the book. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. So stay tuned, folks. Yeah, we'll definitely be able to put, you know, the the link to getting the free book over at drjcrossnd.com for sure. And of course, we'll link to the podcast because that's exciting. Fit is freedom, correct? Correct. Just like the website. And then if folks want to work with you, they're interested in figuring out, you know, is this going to be a good fit? What can they do then? Um, Two choices. Go to the website and click the work with me button. And there's actually a link to the Fit is Freedom program. Um, there is also a program that, uh, depending upon when we drop, uh, that's coming out called Superfit mm-hmm. and Superfit for summer. So that's a that's a really condensed, a little different than what I normally do. Normally, I'm like, I'm 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 all about like slow fitness, and it doesn't sound sexy and it doesn't sound fun, but it keeps people from getting injured, which is my number one like rule. Is that if I break somebody, that's on me. So I want people to not get injured. Super fit is a little bit more of a, hey, let's just jump in with all four feet and go wild. <laughs> and that's coming up too. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. And so, you know, knowing all that, I think one of the things I love to to kind of round out podcasts with is going, what is, what's your ideal client? If anyone was looking at stuff here and you're like, I love working with these kind of folks, give us, give us the scoop. Oh, I like that. I like that question. So, well, we'll just say female for starters, nothing against the guys, just, yeah, it's a, it's a female community. I generally between 48 and 78, which is a pretty broad number. 
But what ties everybody together is a desire to, to enjoy life, to live life fuller, to maybe try adventure. And adventure doesn't have to be all the stuff you and I talked about today. Like sometimes people are saying, they'll say to me, you know, Kelly, my idea of an adventure is just getting in the pool and throwing the grandkids around or throwing the kids around. I'm like, great, that's adventure. It's whatever works for you. It does not have to be, you know, hiking Kilimanjaro. So, but somebody that just is looking for a way to make their life more exciting and more fun. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. So what about for you? What's what's on your bucket list of adventures? What's on your bucket list of of hikes, bikes, rafts, kayaks? What's what's what are you oh, thinking? So, what's next? Well, so this year I have a lot of um fitness freedom retreats that I'm leading. So I'm not doing as many of my own personal adventures, but I am taking a group to Glacier, Glacier National Park. That's a hiking trip. Uh, I'm taking a group to the Smoky Mountains, which is a hiking and river trip. And then at the end of that, I'm staying for a week and paddling um, rivers with friends out there. So that's kind of like always my like win for, you know, finishing up. And then I'll be taking a group to Costa Rica. And in that one, I will probably go a little early and paddle some rivers down there. Oof. So those are, that's what I've got going on right now. In the back of my head, I've got this little thing of, well, why don't you go, you know, somewhere and do, you know, your terrible surfing for a few days. So I might do that too. Awesome. <laughs> so if you see somebody out there flailing around on a surfboard, probably me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Being able to laugh at yourself. So huge, so huge. And and not taking this stuff so seriously, I think is, is so important, especially for our yeah. egos. Cause I think for a lot of us, we do that. feel like, if I can't do it perfectly, I better not do it. Right? It is true. And, and, you know, that is such an important point because I know that sometimes when I first do something really like, we'll call it just dumb, um, when I'm with a group, I know everybody looks at me for just a second and it's kind of like, oh, did she mean to fall down on her face? Um, but the truth is, is it just doesn't matter. What we're here, we're here to have fun. We're here to, you know, pick ourselves up, dust off and go, huh, well, you know, avoid that hole next time or whatever it is and just and just not worry about it. It really doesn't matter how we're how we're perceived by others, I guess. It matters is if you're enjoying what you're doing and you're making a big, big life out of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said, Kelly. My goodness. I think that's the mic drop for you on that one. That's a good, good point for folks. Just, just we just got to have fun. That's all it is. Yes. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And thank you, everybody who listened. I really, really appreciate it. And I love, love, love your podcast. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Hey, Health Junkies. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix podcast. To help support my mission to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out J K R A U S E nd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again.